I want to start out with reading a verse, and it's Psalms 147.3. Uh, with, I want to be talking tonight about restoring broken relationships. Mm. Restoring break, broken le- relationships. And if y'all would go on YouTube and GodTube and just put subscribe, it makes a difference that the message that will get out there further. And, uh, Amen. but the Lord has just planted some things on my heart. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a person one time told me, I bet you preach fire and brimstone every Sunday. And I said, no, I don't. I preach about how to be saved from sin and how to stay out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And applications that we can mm-hmm. use that's from God's word. Mm-hmm. Well, today I want to look at Psalms 147.3 and I have several scriptures and different on this. It says, Psalms 147.3 says, He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. Mm. Let me repeat that again. He healeth the broken heart and bindeth up their wounds. I don't think there's a person alive and there's not a person here or a person over the airways that they haven't had a broken heart by someone. They have had a broken heart and they're and they're in also broken relationships that the people have just cut them out of their life or they've just hurt them so bad that you know it's just these relationships it's so important to have proper relationships now I want to look at this uh, relationships uh, and several scriptures and what I want to start out is it's about us First of all, what part do we have in a broken relationship? In Psalms 139.3, 139, 139.3, I mean 23, excuse me, 129.23 and 24. Thank God I caught the reference first. Search me, O God, know my heart, and try me and know my thoughts. And if there be any wicked in me, lead me in the way of everlasting. Mm. Now, in a broken relationship, Mm. there's always has to be two. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of times we forget the part that we have in that broken relationship. Mm. And we need to pray to God and asking for the knowledge, what place am I in this relationship? Am I a victim? Or am I the one that caused the broken relationship? So search my heart and let me know if I, what is my place in it? Now we have to understand that there are people that hurt us but we tend to hang on them. And sometimes that is the place that we're at. And we need sex. God, search our heart. Is there anything because they've hurt me that I'm hanging on to? And so we need to understand, I have been hurt or they have set me out of their life. This relationship is broken. But what place, give me the knowledge what place I am in this relationship. Mm -hmm. Am I hanging on to that hurt? Mm. Wow. Or am I just being aloof to it? And so we have to say, Lord, what place am I in it? Did I cause it? Or is I'm just the standby of it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because hurting people hurt people. And we have to realize that in broken relationships, there's a hurt there for somebody. Uh, 
Somebody is hurting. It can be a hurt from way before you even met them. It could be a hurt from their childhood. But they will break relationships because they have been hurt so much before they don't want to be hurt again. And you can have a very positive relationship with this person or people. But because of that hurt that is in them, they will hurt you. And they will react to you differently. So we have to understand, what is the place that I have? Did I cause the relationship breaking up? Or am I receiving that hurt that they have in them, in me, that makes me have hurt also? Mm. So now I want us to look at 1 John 1, 8. Now we just had said that, Lord, search me and give me the knowledge of my thoughts and my beliefs and that hurt that is in me. Give me that knowledge. And what place do I have in that? And if he reveals something to you, that if it's the thoughts that we've had, or it's where we have moved away from a relationship, uh -huh. but I'll go into there are times that you need to remove yourself. And we'll cover that later. But in John, 1 John 1, 8, it says, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, mm -hmm. and the truth is not in us. Wow. When we get to the point in our life and we have broken relationships and we do not take any responsibility in that relationship, we're saying, well, I don't have any sin. I wasn't even a part of it. So we have to understand this. Even though you might not instigate the broken relationship, but if we hang on that and don't have forgiveness in our heart, then we're sinning. Of course, we always know, First John 1, 9, that, you know, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we have to acknowledge that, you know, we are capable not only to be the victim, but also the instigator of broken relationships. We have to understand that. That's the reason why we go to God to examine our heart, examine our thoughts. Tell me, and give me the knowledge. What place am I in this? Yes. Am I in this relationship that I caused the hurt or the hurt was causing me and I keep hanging on to it? Uh -huh. So we have to understand. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing when broken relationships we have, and I want to look at Ephesians 4, 29. Ephesians 4, 29. It says, let no corrupt communications proceed out of your mouth, mm. but that is good to use for edifying that it may minister grace unto the healers. Glory. And what, 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 what am I saying there? Mm. When we get we have the tendency, we have their propensity that when we're hurt, we start talking bad about the other person. We start looking at their faults, their part in the broken relationship. And we keep looking at them. And so after we keep looking at them, that our mouth opens and we start saying things about them. And if what we have to understand, life and death, death is in the power of the tongue. Yes. So when we have a broken relationship, 
We do not need to become that gossip or the person that will slander the other person. Because a lot of times when we speak to somebody else that don't even know the situation, they will hear this, how they hurt you, and then they have they their whole mind changes towards that person and it breaks their relationship also. Mm. Uh. It starts looking at them differently. Yeah. So we have to watch out what we say. Now, it says here, but that which is good used for edifying and minister to the grace that hears. Mm -hmm. Stop talking positive, even in the broken relationship. Mm -hmm. That you can start talking positive that, that you lift up the person that hurts you and start talking positive about that. So when you do that, other people, instead of hearing the bad, they will hear that your heart is sincere of wanting that broken relationship restored. Colossians 3.13. Yeah. Colossians 3.13. Forbearing one another. Forgive one another. If anybody have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so do you. So the number one thing when you are revealed and God reveals this source of the broken relationship. First of all, you need to ask for forgiveness for yourself. For the thoughts, and if you had any part in that broken relationship, you might not have a part in that in that relationship, but begin to forgive that person in that broken relationship. Yeah. Start forgiving that person. Start building them up. Now, if it says here, if you have a quarrel against them, you need to go to them. And we need to see, pray against that quarrel. Lord, remove this from me. Remove those thoughts out of my mind towards them. Mm -hmm. Father, even remove that hurt that they hurt me. Yeah. I remember that I had a group of people that lied on me. And, you know, people say, well, you need to go get a lawyer or you need to go do this or that or other. Or you need to go do something to them and say, no. I forgave them. Yes. So that released that hurt out of me. Amen. No longer what they did to me was a constant reminder of that hurt. Mm -hmm. That didn't mean the hurt totally went away, but it was something that it wasn't totally on my mind. Mm -hmm. And I was blaming them yes. all the time of what my thinking was. Yes. And it changed it. When we have to forbear them, that means there are things in our life that we just need to get through it. Mm -hmm. Just totally get through it. Mm -hmm. And forgive one another. And that's where it really begins. Because God forgave us through Christ mm -hmm. Jesus and his blood and his redemption. And he forgave us so we should forgive others. If anything, that releases them out of our mind so we can have peace. Ooh, Lord, yeah. That we can have peace. Yes, amen. Amen. Isaiah 30, 21. Isaiah 30 and 21. And it says... Your ears, your, your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. But when you turn right or left, and when you turn, when you turn your right hand, or when you turn to the left. So what is that saying to us? If the Holy Spirit and God directs you, 
Listen to him. And he will direct your path to let you know, do you go to the person or not go to the person? And when that Holy Spirit speaks to you, he will give you the direction and what to do about it. So we need to have ears to hear our direction by the Holy Spirit and healing relationships. But we have to listen to God when he says it's time to go or not to go. Which I'll cover this a little bit later. So we see here that he, we have to pay attention to the Holy Spirit. Now, if he tells you to go, there's scripture here that tells us. Matthew 18, 15. Mm. Matthew 18, 15. It says, if your brother shall transgress you, go and tell him the fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained a brother. Mm. So the first step, if you are told to go to them, Yes. You go and tell them how they hurt you. You let them know that you've been hurt. Mm -hmm. Or otherwise, that you hurt them. Mm -hmm. And they're holding things against you. And that's where that broken relationship comes in. Yes. So we have to understand this. Now, it goes on, if he hears you, mm. you gain a brother. But there are times when they're not going to hear you at all. And if it's somebody in a church or something that tells you to go and take some witnesses, mm -hmm. and if they don't hear you and the witnesses, then you go before the church. But what I'm talking about here is yeah. relationships that we have in the normal. Right. Not church going people. It might be somebody in the church also. But what I'm saying, other broken relationships, it could be mm -hmm. a son, a daughter, a friend, grandson, granddaughter, yeah. or it could be brother in laws, son in laws, outlaws, or whatever. <laughs> and we have to understand that gets, again, that's when we say, listen to that voice. Yes. Listen to that voice. That says to go or not to go. Right. Too many times we get to the thing that, hey, I'm going to fix this relationship. So I'm going to go and I'm going to make it all better. But the Holy Spirit didn't tell you to go in the first place. Right. If anything, it causes more problems. Uh -huh. Well, I'm going to be the fixer of this relationship. <laughs> And generally, you'll say something that you shouldn't say, and the relationship gets broken even further. The hurt gets even further. That's the reason why we have to pray that, Lord, tell me if to go or not to go. Yes. And we have to definitely listen to the Holy Spirit to give us direction. Colossians 15.33 Now, I mentioned earlier, there are some relationships we don't need to be restored. Mm. Some relationships, we got to be careful that we try to restore them. Mm. I work with people all the time, and they think, well, these people hurt me, so I'm going to go back and forgive them, and which you should forgive them, but I'm going to go back. And just start a new relationship with them. But in Colossians 15, 33, it says, do not, very strong. It didn't say, well, if you feel like it. It <laughs> yeah. says, do not be deceived. Mm. Evil companionship corrupt good habits. 
So we have to understand there's some broken relationships that need to be broken and stay broken and no longer have control over you. If you go keep going around people, and I'm not talking just evil people, but people that every time you go, you get hurt. Why do you go around them? You're actually stepping into the fire. But he's saying, you have to watch yourself. Do not be deceived. There are people that want to have that broken relationship mm -hmm. and there are people that do not need to be in your life. Mm -hmm. Because what happens, you go and you get hurt all over again mm -hmm. or you fall into their habits also. Mm -hmm. The things, the hurts they do, all of a sudden you feel like you're going to start doing the same hurts to other people because that rubs off on you. Yeah. So we have to be careful because I work with people that have been out of the drug scenes, been out of stuff, uh, bad relationships, and they say, well, I need to forgive them. Yes, but you can forgive them from afar. You do not, if somebody beats you, you don't need to go in there to be beat again. If somebody tears you down, you do not need to go in to be tore down again. Right. You need to forgive them even if it's a far. Otherwise, you need to relinquish them to God. Yes. Forgive them and let God do the work in them. Now, you could pray for them. Pray that God will send their word, his word, and heal them and deliver them from the, their destruction. You don't write them off. You pray for them and relinquish them to God. And then go on. But we have to be. Watch out. And have to listen. Do I go or not go? Too many people have the tendency. They go back into bad relationships. I've worked with women. Over the years. That have been abused women. And. They go back into a relationship. Because well. When they were good, they were really good, and they loved me. And then they get the hell beat out of them. Sorry what I said. I don't, but that's the good thing to do, that's how to say it. And they should have never gone back. They try to heal relationships that should never been healed in the first place. They can heal that relationship by praying for them afar and forgiving them. And that heals your relationship with them. But we have to watch out of going back into bad relationships. Mm -hmm. Those women always tell me, well, they're so good. They love me. They tell me how sweet I am. I call that goat, rip, goat roper mentality. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, cowboy Smooth talking cowboys that could just let that butter slide off their tongue. And they pull you in like a spider into a trap. And we have to understand. Proverbs 13 20, with the same idea in, uh, in mind. He who walks with the wise shall be wise. But companions with fools shall be destroyed. We have to listen to the Holy Spirit and listen to God to oh. say what relationships mm -hmm. need to be restored and which ones I should go around. Uh -huh. That if a foolish person and you walk with them. You're going to end up. In the same situation again. And being hurt. Mm -hmm. So otherwise. What it says. You got to choose your company. Oh, yeah. Who you have fellowship with. Mm -hmm. And I'm even going to talk about churches on this. I've had so many people I've counseled with. In the last few years. That they get beat up in their church and they're not even being fed. It's time for them to move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
you got to go to the place where you're celebrate instead of tolerate it. You need to go to a place that loves you in spite of yourself and their selves. Mm -hmm. In spite of your faults. They still love you. We have to understand that we to restore relationships, we need to understand, first of all, we need to forgive others. Yes. We need to forgive them. Amen. But then also ask for God to reveal into us what part do I have in this relationship? Am I the hurt or the I'm the hurt e? We have to understand yeah. that. Yeah. Uh-huh. And said, Lord, if I had any place in this broken relationship, let me know so I can yeah. ask for healing of that relationship. Uh-huh. Mm. Yeah. Matthew 5, 43 and 44. Matthew 5, 43 and 44. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. That's a natural thing. That's a natural thing that you hate your enemies. But what did Jesus say? What did he say? But I say unto to you, Love your enemies. Mm. Bless it. Bless those that curse you. Do good that hate you. And pray for those who despitely use you Mm. and persecute you. Now, what is that saying to us? In broken relationships, when we've been hurt. We need to pray for the people. Mm -hmm. Pray for the people. That doesn't mean that you need to go around them. Because their soul is just as important as your soul to come under salvation and to be delivered. So in our broken relationships, and if they've been hurting you, you still love them. Because you have to have that Christ-like love that you don't want anybody to perish. That they, the Lord would send that word and heal them and deliver them. Mm -hmm. We pray for the deliverance of the people. Yes, amen. Definitely deliverance. Yes. So when we look at healing broken relationships, we first it begins in us. What part do we have in it? If there's sin in our life, we need to say, Lord, forgive me of that sin. Mm-hmm. If I if my mouth talks too much about it and actually putting the person down, mm-hmm. Lord, heal my mouth. Mm, that's good. Put a rudder on that tongue. Put a bridle on that tub. Boy. Even though we sometimes you put a bridle on a horse and the horse will still kick and do other things. But we have to understand that bridle, you can make that horse go in the right direction. Mm-hmm. That they won't go to the left or the right. And that's what you need to pray. Oh, yeah. Pray, what do I do with this broken relationship? Mm-hmm. Do I go to them or I stay away? Do I ask, forgive them? To their face, or do I forgive them from afar? You have to listen. That's the key. Listen. Hearken to that voice. Mm -hmm. But also, we have to realize that we do not need to go back and try to restore broken relationships that are going to do you harm. Yeah. That are going to do you harm. Because you're just asking for it. You're asking to be hurt again. 
So you ask and forgive them from afar. Yes. So they can be set free. And besides that, when you ask the forgiveness, that releases you yes. even from that hurt. Amen. But we also we have to realize we don't go build other relationships that hurt us before. And we have to understand, do we walk with the wise or do we walk with the people that are going to get us in trouble? Wow. But the main thing the Lord tells us is that we need to bless them. Scripture talks about you need to love them and heat coals upon their head. So when we look at broken relationships, we need God first to do a work in us so we can get the proper perspective of the broken mm -hmm. relationship. Oh, yeah, yeah. The proper relationship in it. God, heal me, but also heal them. Forgive me, but also forgive them. Give me wisdom of what to do and wisdom to know not what to do. Amen. Lord, keep my feet from running into mischief Ooh. and into hurt. Amen. Father, I just pray peace over that situation. Peace over broken relationships. Let us pray. Father God, we just come to you right now. Father, I know that you are the great healer. And you are the great restorer. Because when you restore something, it is better than it was before. But Father, help us to look at ourselves first. And help us to keep our mouth intact. Oh, Father, we just speak right now. Heal broken relationships. Yes. So we can be set free, but also the other person can be set free. Yes. Father, we speak this in Jesus Christ's name. Help us pray for them. Help us forgive them. Remove that hurt from them and from us. We ask this all in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.